Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we will learn about a new update related to UI automation in Power Automate Desktop. So please watch this video till then so that you can understand it completely. And if you have not subscribed my YouTube channel yet, please subscribe it. So let's get started. In Power Automate Desktop, under this click UI element in window action, we will have a property called simulate action. If you will enable this simulate action, what it will do is it will perform the click operation in the background, which means for this, it's not necessary to bring the window in the foreground. Let's see this in the action. For this to work, what I will do is I will open the calculator. Calculator app is opened. Now what I will do is I will go to UI element. Click on add UI element. You can and then you can capture any button here. For this what I will do is I will press control and left mouse click. Control has been captured. Now what I will do is I will click on save. And now as you can see that calculator app is in the background. So if we run this bot, what will happen is it will bring the calculator application in the foreground and then perform the click operation. Right? Now let's see if you do not want it to perform the click operation this way and you want it to do this action in the background what you can do is you can select this option which is simulate action if you click on it and then click on save and now if you run this bot you will see that it will click on that button without bringing that application in the foreground so as you can see execution has been completed successfully and here you can see that it has got the value which is 8. Similarly you will find this property under the populate text fill in window and also press button in window action. So if you want to utilize this property while using these actions you can enable it and it will be able to click or populate the data in the background without bringing that application in the foreground. So let's do one thing. Let's create a very simple uh, flow. What it will do is it will just add two numbers. Okay. So in this process, we will also see how it is able to perform the operations in the background and also you will see some selector manipulation techniques okay so since we have already used this click ui element in window so i'll keep it that way again i'll just copy it and paste it so that i can capture another element i will click double click on it and then i will click on add ui element And this time I will capture 7. So for this I will press Ctrl and left mouse click. Selector has been captured and then I will press save. I will copy it again and paste it. And again I will press add UI element. And now I will capture plus. So I will choose this selector here. And here I will choose 7. 
and I will keep it before it right so first it will click on 8 then it will click on plus sign then click on 7 right now what I want to do is I want to click on equals to sign I will click on add UI element control and left mouse click click on save and in the last what I want to do is I want to get the details click on add UI element and then capture this field and here I will name this variable as result right Now what I will do is I will right click on click your element in window and then say run from here and now you can see that it has been able to perform the addition operation. You can see the result is 50, right? But what I want to do is I want to just get the 15. For that, what I will do is I'll go to the text, and from here I will use replace text action. I will take a variable which is result. What I want to find and replace is display is and replace it with space and stored its result to result variable again and then what I will do is I will use display message box and here I will use this variable which is result and I will keep the message box always on top and then click on save this time before running it what I want to do is I want to get the input from the user before typing it into the calculator so I can say that please enter first number and the value will be stored in the number one and again I can copy and paste that action and here I can say that second number and the variable is going to be stored variable name is going to be number two And now we will manipulate the selector. So selector that I want to modify is for button 8 and button 7. I'll go to the UI elements and from here I will choose button 8. I'll go to button 8 and here you can see that it has 8. So what I will do is I'll just take the variable which is number one similarly I'll go to the button 7 here is the selector and what I will do is here I will put the variable name as number 2 
okay now i will click on run we have typed one and eight as you can see that it was not able to perform the operation so let's do it other way so what we will do is we will go to button it and let's make it as text editor and here also let's make it as text editor I will clear the calculator and then I will click on run I've typed 1 and 7 And this time you can see that it is successfully click on the buttons right consider that what if you get any error inside this block right so what you can do in that case with that what we will do is we'll go to flow control and wrap this entire code in the exception handling block and then what I want to do is I want to run a subflow I will drag this down here and here what I will do is I'll create a subflow which will be named as exception handling and what I want to do here is I want to get the error details for that I can use get last error action this action will give me the last error and then I can use display message and here I can use the properties of last error so first we have this message next is going to be action name And the third one which I'm going to print is location. I'll keep the message box always on top. Right? So whenever there is any error at any place, it will immediately come here and it will show the message. So let's generate an error. To generate an error, I will close this calculated application and now I will run the bot. As you can see that it was not able to click but it did not go to anywhere reason behind that is because we did not specify where it has to go so i came to on block error property clicked on new rule and from here i chose exception handling and then i said that continue the flow run 
and go to the end of the block which means after displaying this message it will come here without executing rest of the actions so let's generate the error again Here you can see that it has been able to capture the error and the moment I will click on OK, you will see that execution has been completed. So this is how you can use simulate action in UI automation which will help you to perform the operations in the background without bringing that window in the front and also you can do the exception handling to be able to handle the exceptions and let the board perform the tasks properly if you like this video please click on the like button and please subscribe my youtube channel and if you have any question please post it in the comment section thank you for watching have a great day